CCTV Camera World is proud to provide support for products purchased from our website. If you purchased your product from another vendor, please contact the vendor you purchased from for further assistance. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a recording schedule and enable motion detection for your Security Cameras Inc. NVR. By default, these NVRs are set to record continuously, which means they'll record 24-7 unless you customize the recording schedule, and I'm about to show you how to do that. So first, you need to hover your mouse to the bottom of the NVR screen. It's going to bring up this menu, so you're going to click the Menu button, and then click the Setup button, which is going to take you to the main menu. So to get to the recording schedule, you can either first go to the Record page and then go to the Record tab, or click directly on the Record tab option from the main menu. It's going to take you to the record page and the first tab called record is simply just a stream mode and pre-record control and then ANR stands for automatic network replenishment in other words if you have an SD card in your camera and the NVR goes down for whatever reason the camera will continue recording on its SD card and then replenish that storage or that video as soon as your NVR reboots now you do need to have the SD card installed on the camera, have it enabled on the camera, and then also enable it in your NVR. Pre-record simply means that the system will record before and append video footage to events like motion detection or any of the AI detection. It'll actually pre-record some footage and append it to the beginning of that event so that way you don't miss anything. The stream mode dictates how you want to record. If you want to record both streams, the mainstream and the substream, to have the mainstream, the full resolution, and then have the substream so you can play multiple cameras at the same time and playback, and you don't have to worry about the mainstream restrictions. Or if you want to have a substream backup just in case to have as well. So again, if you choose mainstream, it's only going to record the mainstream. You won't have the substream as a backup or to view many substreams at the same time when you're doing playback. Record switch just means that you want to record this channel at all. So if you have record switch enabled, that means this channel will record. If you don't want that channel to record, you would uncheck the record switch option and then click the apply button at the bottom right hand side and it will prevent that channel from recording and then next we can go to the record schedule tab. So inside of the record schedule tab, this is where you can set and customize your recording schedule. For example, let's say I only wanted to record motion while the business is open between the hours of eight and six o'clock. So we would come down here to 8 a.m. and then we would take and drag our mouse. You notice how I'm, I'm making a large selection here. And this allows me to go all the way down through all the days and any day between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. So 6 p.m. would be 1800 in military time. Then I can set this to record motion. So if I want to get rid of the normal recording, so what this would do between these hours actually record continuously and then also show me where the motion detection events occurred. So if you're one of those people who likes to record continuously but also see when motion detection occurred, then you would want your schedule to look something like this. If you wanted it to happen 24-7, then of course you would fill out the yellow spaces uh, between midnight and 8 a.m. and then 6 p.m. and midnight. Of course, in this example, I do just want to record motion while the business is open between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. So I'm going to go back here to the normal and what this will allow me to do is again draw this section, draw this rectangle which is covering the section of the schedule and what that's going to do is get rid of the normal recording. Uh, if you had any input or output, this is, these are alarms, these are external alarms. If your NVR has an alarm panel, you can put those in there. Or if you have any PIR cameras that have a passive infrared sensor or you have those uh, connected to your NVR. So the main two are going to be normal and motion detection. AI will cover in another series of videos and that has a different recording schedule. So I've created my recording schedule. I'm gonna go ahead and click the apply button. So basically what this means is during the day, during business hours between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m., the system is only gonna record on motion. During the nighttime, when the business is closed, it's gonna keep a 24 seven recording schedule. So you'll note that I only did this for channel one. So if I go to channel two, it's set to a normal 24 seven recording schedule. 
So you can customize your channels and have them be configured in different ways. So if you have a camera that's in a particularly critical location, like the entrance to your home or business, then you can of course leave that camera set to a continuous recording schedule. But essentially what this recording schedule is attempting to do is save some storage space during the day when I know that I will only wanna see events and you could have this schedule be flipped, right? You could do continuous recording while you're open just to have that footage be available. This is especially useful in retail. And then you could have it set to motion just in case anybody breaks into your business. So the, this is probably the most common way to set a recording schedule, either this way that I have it set or the opposite where you have motion during the nighttime and then you have continuous recording during the day. So I'm gonna click apply again, just to make sure that it's saved. It says nothing changed. And then I actually wanna copy this to the rest of my channel. So I can go down here, I click the copy button. It brings up the copy or parameter copy window. And then I can choose if I wanna select it to certain days, which is the source channel, right? I, I can choose the source channel and what days I actually wanna copy. And then down here, I can choose the target channels and I wanna select all. So I'm copying this recording schedule to all. So I'm gonna click the copy button says the copy is successful. I'm gonna click the apply button. It says it saved the parameters successfully. So then when I go to each one of these cameras, each one of these channels, it should have the recording schedule that I set. And it does. And like I mentioned, you can set a custom schedule for each channel. You don't need to make the schedule be the same for all your channels. So now that I've actually enabled the recording schedule to only record on motion during the day, I need to go ahead and enable motion detection. So in order to do that, there's actually two places where you can manage motion detection settings. So the first place to actually enable motion detection and customize your motion detection settings, you need to go to the channel tab. So I went from record to the channel tab. Then in the channel tab, there's another sub tab called motion. So I'm gonna click on motion to get to the motion detection settings. And in here we can just see that I have six cameras connected. The setup button is gonna be the region detection settings. The switch setting simply means that motion detection is enabled for that channel. If you don't wanna record motion or have it detected for a channel, simply uncheck that and click the apply button. Sensitivity, pretty self-explanatory. This is how sensitive you want your motion detection to be. And then SMD by recorder stands for smart motion detection by recorder. So essentially you have four options here. Motion, which means it will trigger and detect on any type of motion. Pedestrian, which means that the motion detection will attempt to only ever trigger if a pedestrian is present. Vehicle, again, it will attempt to only ever trigger motion if a vehicle is present. And then vehicle and pedestrian, again, will only attempt to trigger if a vehicle and pedestrian is present. Again, it's not perfect, but it will attempt to only trigger when these things are present. So if you leave it on motion, it will pretty much trigger on most things. Uh, with these other settings, the algorithm will attempt to only trigger when those objects are present. So just for the sake of this example, I'm gonna leave everything set to the default motion, but you can of course customize these for certain areas. Let's say you have an area where you know only pedestrians should be present, then you'll do that and vice versa for vehicles, or if it's street facing, then you can do vehicles or pedestrians. So the other important thing to do in this would be the region settings. And like I said, those are accessible by clicking the setup button here, this gear icon. So when I click that, it's gonna bring up this. And then you can see you also have your other options here as well. So let's say I didn't care about any vehicles or anybody on the left-hand side here. I'm gonna click and drag. I'm holding my mouse button here to then get rid of this. Let's say I really only care about this uh, car here. So I'm gonna actually paint the edges around here. You wanna give a little bit of leeway. That way the camera has a chance to detect if anybody's there. And then I would right click out of here and then click apply. So now it's saved those parameters. And then when I go back in here to the setup window it saved this region. So now motion detection for channel one will only ever be recorded or detected in this region. If somebody approaches this Toyota here, then the motion detection for this channel. This guy standing here and, and, and messing around with his truck, uh, he will not detect or be recorded 
for this grid. So the red is where it will actually select it. And of course, if you want to clear all, you can click the clear all button. That's going to get rid of everything. And then if you want to record motion wherever it happens in the image, then you would click the select all option. Again, to get out of this menu, you would right click on your mouse and then click the apply button. So it says save parameters successful. What I did again was I went back in the setup window and then I clicked the select all. So whenever any type of motion, so now this guy sitting here next to his truck, once he stands up, it will be detected as motion. This truck moving here on the left hand side will also be detected as motion. So again, like let's say I didn't want to get motion alerts just from vehicles crossing there, then I would of course change that. Except I want to get motion for everything, so I'm leaving it to the whole grid screen. Again, right click out of here, and then make sure that you always click apply to save your changes. If it says nothing changed, perfect. Then you click OK to get out of there. The second area where you can choose what motion detection does if motion is detected would be under the alarm settings. So again, we set a recording schedule to only record motion during the day when the business is open between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m., just as an example. And then we also went in the channel and then motion settings to set our region and then also look at the AI or smart motion detection features that are offered on this NVR. So again, the last place to check is under alarm and then the motion tab. So if you're somebody who likes auto alerts, you can set your NVR to buzz. It's going to essentially make it beep whenever a motion is detected. We have an alarm out. This is if you have any alarm outs or sirens connected to the alarm panel on the back of your NVR. If your NVR has alarm panels, the latch time is 10 seconds, which means that it will buzz or alarm out for 10 seconds after the alarm is triggered be from a motion event. So you can change that from 10 seconds to 20 seconds to 40 seconds or one minute. Record, of course, this is going to record based on your schedule. So if you turn recording off, then when motion is detected, it won't record for that channel. So you're going to want to leave that checked if you want it to record motion. And then if you have a cameras that are near each other or if motion's detected at one camera, but you also want to record another camera if motion's detected at that camera to have as a fail safe, then you're going to want to come down here, check this box, and then choose the other cameras that you want to have recording. So if you check the checkbox, it's going to highlight all of them. If you uncheck it, it's going to uncheck them. And then you're going to want to make sure that you leave the channel that you're actually wanting to record blue so it will record that channel. So let's say I had channel one, but channel three was a nearby camera that I'd also want to record in case the person comes near channel one. Then I would, of course, check channel three, come down here, click apply, save parameters. If I go back in here, then three will be selected. So whenever an event is recorded on channel one, channel three will also begin recording. You could do that on channel three as well, you know, select channel one. So then both cameras will record any time an event is recorded on either camera. Um, so that's what that cogwheel is useful for. So I'm just going to uncheck these and then click apply. So the next setting is the post recording. So this is how long the NVR will continue recording after the motion detection event is no longer being detected. So while the motion detection event or whatever is triggering the motion is still in frame and still causing motion to be detected, it will continue recording regardless of this post recording number. This post recording number is how long it continues to record after the triggering event has left the view or is no longer moving. So it's going to be a combination of those two things because it's going to try and record from the beginning of that event until 30 seconds, but it will be refreshed if it detects that motion event still continuing. So this is the post recording setting. So what the show message option will do, if you watch the live view video, it will show that message in the live view screen. I'll show an example of that now. So if I right click out of here, and I hover to the right hand side and click the eyeball icon here, we can see that it's showing all of these motion detection messages. So each one of these is a message that you configure in there. So again, I'm going to go back to those settings and then go under the alarm and motion tab. So if you don't want to see those messages for any particular channel, then you would of course disable those here 
and then click the apply button. If we keep scrolling over to the right, if you have email notifications set up, then you can of course leave that checked for that camera. FTP picture upload, again, if you have FTP set up and you wanna send a snapshot to an FTP server. Video, same thing. If you have an FTP server set up and connected to the NVR. Picture to cloud, if you have the Google Drive or Dropbox settings enabled, then you could upload a snapshot video, same thing, to the cloud. Full screen, essentially what this means is if an event is detected and you want it to be in a full screen view on the monitor, then you would select that. So for example, if I were to check this, click apply, and then motion were detected on channel one, then it would bring it into full screen view. So I can click back in here to the setup menu, go back into the motion tab, scroll back over. So that's what the full screen setting would do it, when motion is detected, it'll bring that camera into full screen view. Last but not least, you can also do voice prompts if you have any added to your NVR and you could have that sound out of the NVR through the HDMI port. And then there is a motion button that will take you to the motion settings that I showed you earlier. So you can manage these motion settings from the alarm and then motion tab as well if you need to. Again, adjusting the sensitivity or adjusting the region settings if you really want to or enabling the smart motion detection setting. Hopefully this video helps you set up a recording schedule and motion detection. Thank you for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.